Hey all, welcome to Parkers Reefs. On today's episode, I need your help in deciding what I need to do with heating and chilling for this new aquarium. All right, so you can see my uh, existing tank is still behind me there and um, it's not that hot of a day today and uh, you can hear and probably just see up there the uh, fans are running and that's because I've got uh, a couple of 400 watt radium halides. I need to get that right because sometimes I call them radians and they're not LEDs. They are radium halides up there for a total of 800 watts of power and then I've got five Kessel A360X LEDs up there running and um, the new tank's probably going to be fairly similar except it'll have an additional couple of um, Kessel A360X and uh, now we're talking bigger volumes of water we're going to move from about 900 litres up to about 1500 litres I want to work out the best approach for uh, heating and cooling this new tank and um, my wife she's been very generous in uh, letting me run the air conditioner in this room and having these big noisy fans in there but um, the new tank's actually going to be if I can pan up there It'll be built in up to the ceiling. The, um, that canopy up there will be solid so we don't get the light spill and also the noise from the fans. But it does probably mean that things like the um, air conditioner in this room are going to be less effective because it's, not, it's going to be kind of sealed in. So the cool air in this room is probably not going to get to the aquarium as much. So I've been curious on some different ways of heating and cooling this tank. Now, one thing that does make it a little bit easier, and I'll just switch cameras so you can see. So one thing that will make it a little bit easier is the tank's gonna go on the same spot. Now, it's gonna be a foot longer, which means it will come out a touch more into this cavity here. Now, very conveniently uh, along this part of the wall here, it will come out an extra six inches there. And then I've got this gap in the wall there where I've been given the green light to use that space where that pot light is, that pot light, that pot plant is. Now, I could put a chiller out there, I could put a heat exchanger out there, I could put a um, swimming pool chiller and heater out there, and I'm curious to see what you guys think would be the best option. So I've been having a bit of a look online, I wanna check out some of the options out there, and I just thought I'd see what uh, you guys think is the best option with your experience. One thing is, I'm pretty keen to get away from these fans. I may still have some small fans in the uh, hood for um, uh, just keeping the humidity out of the tank, but uh, I can't wait to not hear the hum of those fans going even when we're in the cooler months. All right, so this is one of the first options here, and this is a uh, heat exchanger made by uh, my good friend Bill Wan over in America. Now, what's uh, interesting about this unit is that it connects to both heating and cool water which is fairly unique. A lot of the time these heat exchanges connect to just, uh, just the hot water and they're a very cost-effective way of um, heating your aquarium by using a uh, heat loop of hot water throughout your house, which basically means that it pumps the hot water through your piping, which will come in through uh, the titanium coil in here. It'll go around your aquarium water, comes in through there, passes through the coils, uh, the titanium coil, and back out there. So basically the hot water goes in via the uh, titanium coil there and passively heats um, your aquarium water through there. Where Bill's is a bit different is he actually connects it to cold water as well and you can use it to cool your aquarium. Now, I've had a bit of a look into this. Um, it seems like the heating side works quite well. Um, very, very cost effective once it's um, up and running. The only uh, hesitation or thing I'm not really sure on is the cooling side, which is probably the side I'll use more considering uh, our Australian climate here. You need to waste the cold water. You can't have it loop back where your hot water can loop back to your hot water service and be reheated by the gas. You can't do that with your cold water. You can run into trouble with Legionnaire's disease and things like that. So basically you have to waste the cold water. Now, that, that's a bit of a worry for me. I don't, know how, I don't know how effective it's going to be at cooling. I'm not sure how much waste water there's going to be. Um, some feedback on how people have had them work would be really cool. I've got another picture um, here. That's what it looks like inside that reactor there. You can see the titanium coil span around there. So the, the whether it be the hot or cold water, it goes through there. And then your aquarium water passes in through this wider section here and it, um, the temperature is affected by the temperature of that coil. It's basically replacing the um, electric filament in your heater with um, a water heated and cooled filament. So it kind of makes sense. Um, it's just the cooling side I'm not so sure on. And it's, um, you know, Bill's, Bill's 
a genius and he does some incredible systems. You see this is fully automated. It's got a high quality Grunfoss circulation pump. We've got a number of solenoids there that will open and close depending on whether you're needing heating and cooling, all those sort of things. So I'm sure in the right climate and if your uh, town water is very cold on those hot days um, or, or you don't have as hot days, this would be an incredibly efficient way of going for heating your aquarium, but I'm not so sure how effective it would be at cooling. So that was one option. Another option I've been looking at is, uh, and a big shout out to uh, uh, the guys up at Coral Essentials and also Chad Chatfield who are running this system. Uh, the, they're basically a pool sized heater and chiller. Now, when I say basically, it is. It is a pool uh, heater and chiller. Um, and you can see they're very cost effective at about $2,000. And uh, something like this is designed to heat and cool like 20,000 liter pools, actually 50,000 liters this one um, is capable of. So. It's like it's barely pushing this thing remotely near its um, remotely near its range. You can see for two thousand dollars, it will do heating and cooling. It has a titanium heat exchanger because they make them compatible with saltwater pools. It's got a float switch, so if water's coming through, no water's going through it, it'll turn off. Um, they're quite economical, and I believe that they're inverters, so they only use as much power as they need to. And this final part here is that they've got an ABS cabinet, so it's like a plastic cabinet rather than uh, steel, so it shouldn't. Uh, not that it'd matter in this instance because it'd be mounted outside, so it'd be away from salt water, but still interesting to note. Um, my only qualm with this unit um, is that it's massive. Um, I don't think this is gonna fit in the space that I've been allowed to use um, outside the house, which means I'd have to get a little bit creative in uh, probably mounting this up on the roof, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that. Um, I'm not sure whether it's the best idea to be pumping water up that far. Um, Otherwise, it seems like a pretty good idea. Now, what did get me excited was like, this has got the capacity of nine kilowatts, which is like about 20 times the size of uh, most aquarium chillers. I did get excited thinking, well, we've got, um, that's their nine kilowatt one. They have smaller ones and the prices come down on like two and a half kilowatts sounds incredible. The only downside here is these do heating only. They do have titanium heat exchangers. Um, they're suitable for much smaller volumes, up to 3,000 litres, so this thing would be perfect, but it is heating only, um, which is a shame, and it's a much smaller unit, so it would have fit into that space, but heating only, heating's not the thing I have issues with, it's cooling. Heaters, I can chuck in, if it, I can chuck the traditional heater in the sump, and that'll get the job done. It's chilling on this unit with the um, sealed up top, which is going to make things a little bit complicated, and you can see we get these mini ones are still only heating only, even the six kilowatt one, when we've got up to seven kilowatts, which again is a bit cheaper, it's only $1,600, not too bad, that's Australian dollars. It's still um, that same size unit, which is quite large. I'm pretty sure we've got the specs down here somewhere. Uh, uh, tch, tch, tch. I'm sure we got the specs. And it tells you how far apart, why you have to have it mounted from everything, which could be an issue because I want um, it tucked pretty neatly into that, uh, into that section um, outside. Here we go, specifications. The website's a bit funky. All right, well, okay. So let's see, we've got uh, dimensions, one meter by 40 centimeters by 60 centimeters, basically. It's gonna be pretty awkward in that space. It's too big, The it's huge, it's 45 kilos. It's a beast of a unit. Um, it, it ticks all the boxes apart from its physical size. If I could get one half the size with half the capacity, even a quarter um, would be fine. A one and a half kilowatt um, unit would be incredible. But um, so I'm, I'm not sure about that, but uh, let me know if you guys have come across any pool heaters and chillers that are a bit smaller in size than might fit in the spot. And then finally, my last sort of option that I'm looking at is, um, it's a path that's been pretty well um, beaten out before, but, um, you know, no need to uh, change what isn't broken. And that's using the uh, Teco range of chillers. Now they've got their new R290 line, which is uh, meant to be a lot more efficient with this new gas. So I'd be looking at the TK2000 model. It makes it 50% more efficient uh, with the gas over the uh, R134A uh, gas. Uh, now these things, I've heard a little bit of feedback. They've had trouble with the built-in heaters, but uh, in fairness, Teco, the company, have been replacing them on warranty. Um, it's got a digital thermostat, so I can set the temperatures okay. I believe the new ones all come with uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, new series comes with Wi-Fi compatibility. I'm not sure whether the compatibility means it is Wi-Fi or it has Wi-Fi capabilities, but um, that's okay. I mean, I think from what I've seen, uh, it has like an Ethernet port on the back, which 
that's okay. Uh, an IT guy like me can uh, hook something into that without any issues. But with a new gas, it's meant to be a lot more efficient. Um, I know it's going to be suitable for aquarium use. Um, it's going to do our temperature range fine. It's going to be safe with the salt water. That's no issue. Um, it's quite compact. I'm not sure if we have the dimensions here. We don't. Um, but it is quite compact and will do the job very, very nicely. Um, it will fit into that space just fine. Even the large 2000. And I can even point the um, exhaust in a direction that I want. Um, my wife's pretty keen on me putting a, a little... Uh, a, a, sort of decorative box around it um, so that it doesn't look like a chiller sitting outside. It looks more like a, uh, a wooden box with a bit of a frame around it or something like that. So um, I think this would probably work pretty well. The only downsides to this is if we go to the uh, 2000 model, we're talking uh, $1,800, somewhere between $1,800 and $1,900 for the um, TK2000. And like I said, I have heard some bad things about the heaters. Now, that's not a deal breaker because um, a heater... I can replace this, the chilling I really need, but that being said, you pay nearly $2,000 or something and it's meant to heat, I want it to heat. So that's my uh, investigation so far. They're the sort of the three things I've uh, narrowed it down to. We've got that um, crazy uh, serious setup of the uh, heat exchanger with the titanium coil using uh, hot water loops and uh, cooling loops. There's obviously a bit of a install effort and cost in setting that up but um, it should be very efficient from there. And the cooling side's a little bit um, untested from my perspective. Please tell me if you've seen otherwise. We've got the uh, Swim Max gigantic pool uh, heaters and chillers. I have seen these run on a couple of guys um, over in Perth um, and guys up in Cairns, and they're getting uh, great results from them. It's just pretty big where I need to put it. So again, if someone out there knows of one that's slightly smaller, if they know that I can cut this cabinet down, it doesn't look like it. I mean, it looks like it's pretty fully maximized, but let me know if you've seen otherwise. And then finally, um, the Teco or a different brand of aquarium chiller doesn't necessarily have to be Teco. I just saw their new gas and saw that they're more efficient and figured that's probably going to be a good way to go. They seem to have a pretty good rep, but um, if you know of a better chiller for something around 1500 to 2000 liters, it's always nice to oversize these things a little bit. Um, let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, there you have it. That's my wrap up of what uh, sort of heating and cooling I should use on the new tank in this location. I'd really appreciate your feedback on this because it's something I um, haven't had to deal with chillers before. So um, I'd, I'd yeah, love the support of the community on what you guys think would be the best way forward. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or feedback, pop it in the comments section down below. And as always, if you have not subscribed, please do because there's going to be a lot more videos coming out about this uh, big tank upgrade. Otherwise, guys, I'll leave you to it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and keep reefing. Bye.